Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. Three, two, one, boom. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back into the podcast uh, version of the Thrive Time Show. And today what we're doing is we are answering a question from a listener out there just like you who took the time to email info at thrive15.com. Uh, my name is Clay Clark. I'm the former U.S. SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, and I'm on a mission to get you into a great financial position. And the question was, how to not spend so much of my time doing minimum wage work? Okay, well, first off, a little fun factoid, is you need to understand the concept of the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle. P-A-R-E-T-O Principle. Also known as the 80-20 Rule. The law of the vital few or the principle of the factor sparsity states that for many events roughly 80 percent of the effects come from 20 percent of the causes what does that mean what it means what it means is that there are things you could be doing that will make a big impact and things that you uh shouldn't be doing that will make uh, there's things that you shouldn't be doing but you maybe you are doing that will create no impact at all or the impact they make is not worth making so let me uh, give you an example um, of, of this in my life. Okay, so uh, we have a member of one of our companies who is very upset with me. Very. Now, the thing is, I don't know who this person is. I mean, I know about the ongoing litigation. Oh. But I don't know about who the person is. I've never met this person. And so what they're doing is they work for one of the companies and they claim that they were terminated for reasons uh, that aren't true, you know? And so uh, that person's manager wrote them up and then another manager wrote them up and somebody else wrote them up. So we have three write-ups from three separate people three all strikes. describing that this customer, this, this employee was yelling or arguing or speaking intensely to our customers. That's so we know that it happened. Three different people. They do the write-up, you know, so, hey, sign here, stop doing that, write-up. By the way, if you want the official Clay Clark write-up for him, just email info at thrive15.com. This thing is hot, hot sizzle. If you're looking to write people up, this thing is this is awesome. This is like a lyrical miracle. But the Universal. Thing is, the, so we had three people that wrote the person up, and uh, the person was like, oh. So I get a text message that comes in and says, I need to speak with you. And this is from the person who was terminated. So what I did is I, I went to my smartphone, and there's this awesome thing called block. You know where you can block a person? So I blocked them, and now I'm here with you guys. Yeah. And so I'm not going to respond. Furthermore, I don't feel the need to respond, and I don't care that it's before Christmas, and this person thinks that the timing of their firing is inconvenient because the timing of them being disrespectful with my clients is always inconvenient because you cannot be upset or difficult or surly with my clients. And so as is tradition, when you block somebody, typically you will get a legal notification that comes in the mail. <laughs> and when that notification comes in, in such a holiday pageantry, I will get that to Winters King, Winters and King, that's Wes Carter with Winters and King, and uh, they're going to handle it. And I am going to do another radio show and, and not respond to it. Christmas and whatever you want. Right. And I'm going to do that. And just one more fun example is that today I had client meetings and the client meetings went really well and we helped some really nice clients grow their business. I had a chance to meet with a witness security today, the security company. I had a great time working with those guys. I uh, had a great meeting with Steve Currington today with Total Ending Concepts. Had a great meeting today with the Elephant in the Room team today. Had a great meeting today with a few members of the OxyFresh team. Had a great meeting with a lot of people. But then I had to get my wife the final Christmas presents because it's on my list, which is why it's in the, the incredible uh, uh, barrel chair over there. So I had I to saw go, those. I had to go get them. Professionally and, wrapped, I and see. And you know what I didn't do? You know what I didn't do? What is that? I didn't respond to any other text messages that came in from the time I left until now. And do you know why? You didn't want to. Pareto's principle. I know what's going to make the biggest impact on my life, and that is taking care of the podcast and the listeners out there and taking care of my wife. And so one financial tip, if you want to cut your net worth in half, 
Don't make time for your wife and always be on your cell phone, always <sighs> responding to text messages. That's just rude. So now that I've teed up the Pareto principle, I would like to get Marshall Morris, the business coach, I'd like to get Marshall Morris's take on the Pareto principle. And how do you use the Pareto principle? Well, here's the deal. A lot of business owners that I see before having listened to the podcast or beginning to work with them one-on-one -on -one, will get into the habit of defining, measuring, refining, defining, defining, measuring, measuring, refining, refining, and then refining some more. Well, you have to refine after you measure. Okay. And at no point do we actually get implemented oh. the specific system that is needed. That's the, that's the, okay, I get it now. Okay. So the important point here is that done done is better than perfect done is better than perfect nice done. okay but you have to go through done in order to get to perfect so the what we need to do is we need to get the 20 percent of the document or the system or the script and just roll it out and start using it because roll that it is out. because that is going to produce 80 percent of the total results that you ultimately need. There's a quote by Reed Hoffman. Oh, come on. You're full of notable quotes. Yeah, re yeah, yeah. Re Reed Hoffman. It's hard for Chubb to keep up. Is the founder of LinkedIn. Yes. Okay? And uh, Reed Hoffman, he says, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product or service, then you have launched too late. So I know from our own businesses that we operate, there have been several times where uh, we've scripted out something and we haven't even uh, actually scripted the punchline to the joke that True. we've that we've incorporated. And when you say we, mainly that's me. Oh well, I've I wasn't. Done this. I wasn't going to throw you right under the bus. I would like to jump wow, under the wow. bus. You're jumping. You're throwing yourself under. I'm a martyr. Okay. I'm a martyr of script writing. But the point is, is that having a, a script, martyr with a marker. <laughs> nice. <laughs> having a script was better than not having a script at all. Absolutely. And just cowboying it every single time. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to have all the listeners. I want you to write down this. These are lists. This is a list of activities that you should probably stop doing. Most of the time, you ninety know, percent of you listening need to stop doing these things. If you're saying you're having a hard time getting your work done, okay. If you're if you're finding yourself doing the the root question is how do I not spend so much of my time doing minimum wage work? Well, these are this is a list of things that you could be doing that are this minimum wage work. One is networking. Stop networking with people that are not ideal and likely buyers. Like stop saying that like. You're networking, but you're actually just giving money to a cause and eating lunch. You're networking, but really you're not working. Right. That, mm. See, it's a little, it's just one different letter. I, you're a clever guy. He's but tall and witty, clever. Witty, witty, witty. Yeah, that's what I meant. Witty. With minimum oxygen up there, he's able to, <laughs> the, the oxygen It's like training in Denver him. compared to Tulsa. He's like, he comes in on our level and he's just He's always out of it. breath, but he's got these great <laughs> ideas. <laughs> so the second is invoice you want to stop invoicing a lot of times you're at a business like a best buy you just when someone you know wants to leave with the product they say you want, you want to pay debit card credit card cash whatever best buy doesn't say hey i'll invoice you for this but so many small business owners who are in the construction business will invoice people for routine transactions landscapers are invoicing residential homeowners for their lawn chup why do we have to stop invoicing if you're not a bank don't be a bank Come on now. If you run out of cash, if you come across uh, an unlucky couple weeks or months of where people are late paying you or drawn out on that and your terms aren't there, you got 60 days on this job, you're going to run out of the lifeblood of your company. If you can't pay your people, you can't pay your vendors, they're going to stop working for you and with you and you are done. Another move. Stop smartphoning. Smartphoning? I see so many people are smartphoning. It's where you are out there trying to respond to every single tweet every facebook update every push notification possible you constantly want to know the moment that a dropbox file was added you just cannot get off that phone you cannot contain a a, a single thought in your mind for a moment because you're constantly being distracted and pulled in tons of areas chop turn off the notifications turn them off baby. just turn them off turn them off when baby. you get home and you get 10 minutes then you can go you know facebook's still there it doesn't have to tell you that somebody talked to you it's still on your phone turn off all the notifications except With for maybe your phone and your work email while you're at work right put a link on here on the show notes to is your smartphone smartphone making you dumb is your smartphone making you dumb the article from psychology today would that mean a dumb smoke dumb phone will make you smart 
Chuck, these are the kinds of things that we don't have time to discuss okay, due okay. to the Pareto principle. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> so you have the smartphoning, though. So, I mean, people get just pulled and you get 70 distractions a day. I mean, if you're listening right now and you got at least 10 missed text messages today, uh, put your hand up. Why are you putting my hand up? I'm trying to drive. I'm not even putting my hand up. You wouldn't even know if I am. Listen, I know if you're putting your hand up. You now, if you had at least 10 missed voicemails today, put your hand up. If you had at least 10 missed social media engagements or, or interactions today, put your hand up. If you didn't respond instantly to a piece of mail that came in the mail, put your hands up. The point is, we're constantly distracted. If you drove by a sign without going, the sign says I should come on in for a 1999 oil change, I guess I have to. I mean, if you're not good to say no and you're like, hi, I'm here to get my oil change. And they said, do you need it? No, but your sign said pull in and I have to respond to everything. <laughs> then you're going to lose the game of life. The next move, social media responding. We talked about that. Next is collecting, collecting from people. You don't need to have a bunch of deadbeat clients. If a client's constantly saying, hey, could you give me a partial refund? Hey, could you could you give me a refund? Hey, could you get me? You got to move on, Chop. Don't have that scarcity mindset. If you're good at what you do and you wow the customer, you don't have to live by that. I have to take every single job because that's a path to the doom loop. You're the doom loop. Marshall, estimates for non-paying customers. You don't have to provide an estimate or a quote for every single person who fills out a form on your website. You don't have to. I got two. Oh. I got two hot ones. Hot ones. Okay. The first First is taking responsibility for all of the credit card receipts that your employees did not turn in. Oh, going running around tracking those down. So, uh, just real quick, how do you handle employees that don't turn in the reimbursements receipts or maybe break equipment? And now you're spending all this time dealing with that problem. Well, first off, you'd lay out the expectations before it happens. You'd lay it out. You know, you put it in your handbook or something. But like an elf in the room, if you break it, you buy it. You know, if you mm. break a piece of equipment, you buy it. Um, at the end of your shift, if the if the cash register's off, then whatever is off by it comes out of your check. Mm. Uh, so if you're off by fifteen dollars, no big deal. We'll just take fifteen dollars out of your check. You know what I mean? Oh, I remember now. Okay, great. So that's how you do it. I and mean, I got just, one more. Yeah, I got another hot one. Reading the page long emails, the wall of text emails. Just hit delete. Just delete. hit delete. Okay, this is my move. This is what maybe you correct me. There's on the no air here. need to be responding to page walls. This of is text. This for is all caps. So uh, text. So if it is a client, yeah, you or read somebody that. that works for you, absolutely, you got to read that. You you put it on your list. You, call that person right then, and you call them and ask of the because no, you know, no one understands what someone else means when they write an email. There's constant misunderstanding. That's right. We could do entire podcasts just about the importance of not delegating via email, but for the sake of time. The emotionally consoling B players, okay? If you have a member of your team who just can't get it done and they're a solid B minus, you don't need to sit there and console them all the time. You need to spend that energy recruiting someone else who can take the job and not have to require so much emotional coaching. So you don't need to spend all your time consulting and consoling B minus team members. The next move, gathering and listening to feedback from idiots. If somebody doesn't know what they're talking about and they're just talking, you don't need to listen. You don't need to listen to it. In fact, I had someone I just talked to over this past weekend. Now, this is thankfully was not a client, so this is a, a non-client deal. But this, 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 this woman wanted to go on a huge tangent explaining to me in great detail how the women who have been abused by Matt Lauer chose to be abused because they chose that industry. Well, the argument was the women chose that industry, therefore they chose to be abused by Matt Lauer because they know in that industry what Weinstein and Lauer are all, are all about. I don't even need to dignify the statement. With, I just move on. I literally just move on. I move on to the next thing because it's just dumb. And you don't need to spend your day arguing with jackass. That's what I was going to say. One thing that you can do is walk away like don't be hostage to people just because they bring up something uncomfortable and now it's weird like well, he, did he just walk away now, a, if it's your yes, boss you can did. look for another job <laughs> right. if it's a client you can market and get new clients if it's an employee you can do so you know sometimes you can't fire them right then right but you could fire the customer in your mind or your boss in your mind and then you could may take action later you that's my favorite action. move that i've seen dr z do oh he's so good at it he just leaves the room when the meeting is over because whatever goes on 
afterwards is not needed. Is not needed because he's made the decision already. Yes. Now, the final thing you could do if you're saying, hey, how do I avoid doing minimum wage work? You're probably doing minimum wage work because you're wasting a huge amount of your day. I mean, if you look at all the statistics out there, the average American is wasting almost almost four hours a day watching TV and an hour and a half to two hours a day on social media. That's a so lot of time. That's six and a half hours a day. A so if you just got that time back, you'd probably have more time to do high-level things. And then when you do high-level things, when you build a system, a system typically will get rid of the task. Like, like, like a great piece of software can get rid of a repetitive task. Elephant in the room right now, we're building awesome software to get rid of the repetitive task of doing payroll. So a little bit of software can really help you quite a bit. So my final little tip for you out there, Thrive Nation, as we wrap up this podcast, is quit responding to birthday messages on Facebook, email, and voicemails. Stop doing it. You don't need to. Just because I said, hey, Chuff, happy birthday on Facebook doesn't mean you have to respond to all 87 people. You're a popular guy. I know you are. But Just you don't say have- no sometimes, right? Just don't respond. One thing I would like to bring up real quick, too, before we uh, end this podcast is the idea of if, if you're stuck doing minimum wage work all the time, remember that your network is your net worth. Oh, preach it. And if you want to get around some higher network uh, net worth people, then you, my friend, need to come to our February 16th and 17th oh, workshop. I see what you did right there. Oh, we can actually give you two free tickets. So don't use that as an excuse. If you're stuck and you want to maybe start your own business, there's no better place to come than to the workshop February 16th and 17th. All you have to do is leave us a review on iTunes on the podcast player for Thrive Time Show. Screenshot that review. Email it to info at thrive15.com. Two free tickets will be sent your way to the February 16th and 17th conference, normally $99 each. Now, Thrive Nation, here's the deal. Uh, we've had a lot of these, but we've had a lot of these workshops and if your business is stuck, just get out to one of these things. It's Do a game-changing, it. it's a two-day, 15-hour workshop. You'll learn everything you need to know to make your business grow. And if not, I'll give you a high five, I'll give your money back, and then we can wrestle. And if you're a woman, we're not going to wrestle because that's weird. My name is Clay Clark. This is the Thrive Time Show. And as always, three, two, one, boom. boom.